The major storylines heading into Blue Ridge is that this track will ho be hosting its final Verizon Cup Series race, as this track will no. They, the track owners has said that they will not allow any more. They, that they will not have any more stock car races for a while because they are concerned about some of the about the mass script which has caused some lap traffic to be in the way. Uh, however, the, the track owners are expecting some Indy car, the Vizio Indy Car Series races to happen somewhere in late May or early June. And also, the biggest story that was coming into this weekend was all the penalties that were assessed following the race 27 at Homestead. Um, out of the seven drivers that were assessed penalties, three of them had some type of points penalty. J Jolgan Chin and Jake Carolyn were involved in their own um, miscue on lap number 52. Logan Chin ran into the 76 of Jake Carolyn. Carolyn did not take that too kindly, so he ran into the back of Logan Chin's car. And then shortly after the race, Carolyn came by Chin's garage and punched him in the face. That had led to him to a probation for physical harm for on drivers and fined $75,000 for Jay Kierlin, while Logan Chin was just given a probation for reckless driving. Walter Green and Brian Kittleson were also in their own little scuffle with just about maybe 12 laps to go in the race, where Kittleson turned Walter Green into the inside wall as Walter Green crashed out after leading the second highest amount of laps with 12. Um, Walter Green then went by to the garage and flipped and cussed out, flipped out, flipped Kittleson and cussed him out while trying to talk him out. However, there was no, however, no punches were thrown by Green, by Walter Green. However, that was not the biggest story. The biggest story of the penalties was that that Shane Harden, Eddie Johnson, and Shane Clark's incident was all a scandal. Shane Harden was had his, all of his points stripped and suspended for one race for reckless, drive, reckless driving under command and abuse of radio communication because according to um according to in, during the investigation they found that Eddie Johns told Shane Harden to intentionally take out the 98 as he saw him as the 98 made contact with the 57 Eddie Johns as a result his points were stripped and he had his win taken away as a result for radio communication that that means that Shane Howard who crossed the line second was de was declared the official winner of that race but in order to make the, but Novar wanted to make the sides even, so they decided to dock 25 points away from Shane Clark the third for reckless driving. And now let's head to Kendall for the race. The Novar Verizon Cup Series race number 20, say to 30. We head to the Air Canada 250 at the Blue Ridge Super Speedway in Blue Ridge, Alberta, Canada. The McDonald's Bowl War will go to number 11, James Wilson Jr. Wilson Jr., who won his first. This is his first career poll. He's going to lead the field with Eric Wilbur in the 07. Colin Greening making his first ever Verizon Cup Series start, replacing Shane Harden, who was suspended after the um, John Gates incident. And Dylan Wally in the 74 is in fourth spot. Gordon Billard in fifth. He's going to already make his move down to the inside of the 57 of Greening. The 57 and the 74. They're going to go three wide. James Wilson Jr. has a good cushion over Eric Wilbur as they're going to come out of turn number two and down the back straightaway. As you see, they're already starting to go three wide. As in a lap, everybody's gonna start all bunched in, but James Wilson Jr., he yeah, looks like he will have the lead, but Eric Wilbur gets a good run coming out for turn four, and looks like he will go and take the lead and lead the first lap of the race. Wilbur will just pass the 11, and he will be the new leader of the race with James, with Jared Lance on the third place man points. He's in, he's gonna try to get second away with Logan Chin in the 72, one of the seven drivers that were penalized last week. First costume and fly at just four laps in. Uh, Colin Greening's debut will go up into disasters after Blake Batanglia gets up into Dave Payton, gets into Shane Howard, and then he gets Cody White in the 59 of Eddie John. Your, sp your second place man is involved. Aaron Fisher also, I believe, got involved, but I believe that the 89 did not get any damage. Here is from Eddie John's perspective. The 50 gets up into the 24, gets the 5703, and then the tw 24 comes down, gets the 22, and gets the 59, the, and then the 89 turns the 24 around. Here's, and here's a pretty weird accident. This was as they took the caution. Scott Johnson turns Mike Hogan, and they all do that. As, as I believe, Al Alan Kimmel did, I believe, a back, either a front flip, I think, in that number 88 car. That's what you don't normally see in No Heart, but that was kind of strange right there. Daniel Salon in the 99, lean on the street start with James Scott in the 9, Josh Mertz in the 81, was in third. Jared Webler in the 17th, 4th, and Cameron Brooks was in 5th, as he's already making a move under the 17th of Jared Webler. Webler was, I believe, ever since Webler made his Verizon Cup debut at, at Nashville a couple of races earlier, 
His worst finish has been 11th, which I would believe that happened at Dover. But Wembler has been pretty prone to be um, a contender every time he makes a Verizon Cup Series turn. Although we don't normally see Wembler all the time. Meanwhile, you see, meanwhile, up ahead, the 9 of Jamie Scott, takes the lead away from... Away from the 99, and Cameron Brooks is right there. We're focusing on Josh Mertz now. He is right now in third. He's getting, on the outside, he's going to shut the door on Brian Kittleson and shut the door on Brian Dawson. That was a powerhouse move by Mertz. But the second caution would fly a lap nine. Um, we're focusing on Chandler Blake, but that's not. But this is not the actual start of the reg. As he tries to pass the lap car, Shane Hart, Colin Greening, he makes a rookie mistake and thinks he's clear, but he just turns down and causes a wreck. Eric Wembler, J Dylan Wally is involved, but that is not all of it. Here is, there was no, he, Greening thought he was cleared to pit, and then he just made a m mistake and miscalculated by a lot, and he gets MJ Holloway and Shane Nargan in the process. Blake Bataglia in the 50 does a great job avoiding that, and you see the sliding Austin Warwick. Here is Warwick's perspective, he tries to avoid, he goes down to the bottom, but couldn't make it, couldn't react in time, and he slides across the grass. Um, Colin Greening was only given a warning since he was a rookie and this was, this was the first time he's ever driven and been in a Novar Cup Series race so they only gave him out with a warning. Um, Jamie Sky in the 9 was your leader on this restart with Cameron Brooks in 2nd, Josh Schmertz in 3rd, Brian Kittleson in 4th and I couldn't really tell who was that 5th, I believe that was Brian Dawson. But the 90 Jamie Sky, he will be in 2nd, there is Brian Dawson, he passed the 99. Daniel Simon was actually the fifth, excuse me. The 9, the 9, the 33, the 53, and the 81, they would all have their battle for the lead. Right there as they come out of turn four. Looks like Kittles is going to make it three wide for the lead. And apparently Brian can come into the line. It will look like Cameron Brooks led that lap. Caution three would fly a lap 17. And it was, I believe, the biggest crash of the day. Brian Dawson tries to go 405 wide with Jesse Donahue, Jared Webler, Mike Hamlin, Walter Green, and they all go spinning. The 17 goes spinning around. The, th the 39 goes around. The 64 goes around. And then some drivers slow down. The others get have nowhere to go, like Gordon Billard. Um, David Payton is collected in this as well. Jay Onori and Eric Webler run in the back of each other, and they slide. The 0-1 slides. Eric Webler has heavy damage. You can obviously tell he is done for the day right there. Here's from the helicopter's perspective. Five wide, this never works at super speedways, and that's the reason why. And Cameron Brooks and Michael Scott do a pretty good job, although they just do until, although they just bump into each other during that. But and lo, Shane Clark the third comes barely, nearly misses that one. And that was a pretty impressive move by that by your points leader, right there. Mark McGill in the 56 was your leader on this restart with John McDowell in second, Josh Mertz in third. Yeah, how many times has been? What a, what a theory. Um, the 56 of Mark McGillie, he would get a, um, good jump over Sean McDowell. Josh Merch was in third. Jeff Johnson was in fourth. And fifth was Aaron Fisher coming back from that, um, lap four incident. Um, from, we would have, from here, we would have a, the rest, these last 78 laps would be green. And this would actually break the, um, record from the 2000, from the 1996 event, which had 74 laps. Which had the final 74 under green. As here comes Jeff Johnson, he makes a move under all of them. Josh Mertz thinks it's a good idea, and he's going to draft for the 77 and double zero. Mertz has been all, has been a contender in several occasions, but however, has not had the results. Unlike McDowell, who's actually gone close to the results, but not what he wants. Mertz has done, Mertz has done very well in most of the races that he's been, except he is mirrored back about 25th in points because of bad luck, because he has had bad luck, like crashes. Although he won at Charlotte, which was, which was admitted to be a crash fest. As you see on the bottom, if, if you look at the car behind Jeff Johnson, that is Gerald Lantel, your third place to man in points. He, Lantel has avoided both of these um, chaotic, all three of these chaotic incidents, which swiped down two of your points leaders. Actually, all three points leaders are still going, but I think the, um, I think the, um, they all have, I believe, crashed. Green flag pit stop will start on lap number 51 and go from till about lap 55, I think. And then Brian Kittleson, your defending champ, makes an aggressive move but just passes Josh Mertz before they enter pit road. So that was kind of an aggressive move by um, um, Brian Kittleson. 
As this would cycle out, we would fast forward to about coming to the white flag. Jeff Johnson has a good cushion over the rest of the field. As you see, there's lap traffic up ahead. Johnson, who almost won a lot, who had a who had a shot at Las Vegas before being wrecked on the final lap. He's got a shot to do it now. Here he comes. Now coming around turn number two. Around turn number three now. Now they're heading up the back straightaway. Sean McDowell, the double zero, the second place man is coming. Can he make the move? Or will Jeff Johnson have his win locked up in the hands? Here, McDowell's coming. He get, Johnson accidentally opens the, opens the door for McDowell. It's going to be a drag race between the 77 and the double zero. Who's it going to be? And it looks like Sean McDowell will get his first win of the year for Tyson here at Blue Ridge. His first win for Tyson Bell first win for Tyson Bell Racing and that win that Sean McDowell wanted, he finally got it here at Blue Ridge after passing Jeff Johnson on the final lap.